So on my PC, you can see that I'm connected to a wireless network. Let's look at the properties of IP version 4. Notice the PC is using DHCP. So let's change the IP address to 10.0.0.249. And set the default gateway in this case to the MSR. The MSR has an IP address of 10.0.0.100. So that's what we're going to configure the PC's default gateway as. Click OK. Now it's talking about multiple default gateways. I'm going to click Yes in this case, click OK, and click Close. Notice my Telnet session to the router has disconnected. But let's see if we can ping the router again. And as you can see, the ping succeeds. However, the PC is still not able to ping the switch. The PC is configured with a default gateway of the router, but the switch needs to be configured to use the MSR as its default gateway so that the traffic can get back to the PC. Just because the PC can send traffic to the switch doesn't mean that the switch can return the traffic. So let's telnet to the router. From the router I'm going to telnet to the switch. Log into the switch. Notice I'm on core 1. Now HP A-series switches are layer 3 switches, so there's no command like default gateway. You've got to do the command IP route static, specify the destination IP address, in other words the default route, and I'm going to specify the next top as 10.1.1.100. In other words, the MSR's Gigabit 01 interface. Hit enter. So, can the PC ping the switch? And as you can see, the ping now succeeds. So I'll just save the configuration on the core switch. Put out of the switch, so I'm back on the router, and let's telnet to switch 2. IP route static, 0, .0, 0, 0, 0 in this case. You don't have to put the four zeros in, and I'm going to set the default gateway to the router. Can the PC ping core 2? And as you can see, it can. So I'll save the configuration on core 2. So I'm able to ping the switches from my PC. So 10.0.0.249 is able to ping both core switches. Now we need to configure the two PCs. So PC2 and PC3 need to be configured in VLAN 2 and VLAN 3. So I need to create VLANs on core 1 and core 2, put the ports into the relevant VLANs. I'm going to set up multiple VLANs on both switches because these switches support inter-VLAN routing. I want to set up port 27 and 28 as a link aggregation or bridge aggregation. Set it up as a trunk to allow multiple VLANs between the two switches and enable full connectivity. So firstly, let's configure port 27 and 28 as a link aggregation. So I'm going to telnet to 10.1.1.101, the first core switch, as well as telnet to the second core switch. Notice I'm able to log into both switches. So I've set up a connection from my recording machine to core 1 and core 2. Let's see what spanning tree has done. So display STP.
And in the output here, you can see that this switches bridge ID is 32768, the default priority, followed by its MAC address. This switch's priority is 32768 with its MAC address. However, the root of the topology is 32768 with a MAC address ending in B7EA. In other words, this switch, switch 2, is the root. Notice on switch 1, you can see that it says the MAC address ending in B7EA is the root, but this switch is not the root because it has a separate or different MAC address. Notice the costs on this switch are set to zero, whereas the cost here is set to two. We have a 10 gig link between these two switches. Notice looking at the ports, you can see that port 101 is forwarding on both switches. Those are the interfaces connected to our PCs. I'm going to hit forward slash and let's have a look at port 27. Or rather, backslash forward slash means that the forward slash is a value that we're looking for, 27. Notice port 27 is forwarding as well as port 28. But on this switch, I'm going to hit forward slash backslash to say that the next forward slash is a value that we're looking for, followed by 27. So I'm searching for forward slash 27. In other words, this port. Notice port 27 is forwarding, but port 28 is discarding. In other words, port 28 on switch 1 is discarding or blocking. Spanning tree has stopped the loop in this topology. So one of these links is not being used. In the real world, we'd want to bond these links together in a link aggregation or ether channel or trunk, depending which term you prefer. Be careful of the word trunk. In E series, once again, a trunk means link aggregation, but in A series and Cisco, a trunk means a tagged port. Now I'm telnetting via the router, via core one to core two. So I'm gonna set up core two first because it's the furthest device away from me. That's in case a link drops or we have some problem. So on core two, type the command system view. Interface, or rather interface, bridge aggregation, and I can specify a number. Now this is just a local unique value to the switch. So I'm gonna specify bridge aggregation one. I'm gonna give it a description, like description, bag, between A5800s. Display this. There's my description on my bridge aggregation. So quit. Now I need to add interfaces to the bridge aggregation. So interface 10 gigabit 1027. Just to show you that, if I type the command display interface brief, and I scroll down, you can see that I've got two 10 gigabit interfaces that are up, up. In other words, port 27 and port 28 are connecting these two switches. So to put the interface in the bridge aggregation, I type the command port link aggregation group, and I specify my group number. We use bridge aggregation one. So I hit one there. I can go on to the second interface, 28, and also put it in the bridge aggregation. Now, my link breaks while spanning tree computes. So what I'll do is go to switch one and do something similar. So interface, bridge aggregation, one. Description, bag, between, A5800s. In the meantime, you can see that I now have access to switch two. Spanning tree has sorted itself out. Quit. 
interface 10 gigabit 1027 port a link aggregation group 1 now the bridge aggregation numbers do not have to be the same on both sides you can have bridge aggregation 1 connecting to bridge aggregation 2 so port 28 add it to group 1 that's how you configure basic bridge aggregation let's type the command display stp notice the cost has changed it was 2 before but now it's 1 that's the cost to get to the root bridge and that's because we've got a 20 gig link between these two switches I'll search for port 27 notice my two ports 27 and 28 are showing down however if I type display interface brief notice I've got a bag running at 20 gigabits per second the same here display interface brief notice the bag is running at 20 gigabits per second so display STP notice my bridge aggregation is forwarding on switch 1 and it's forwarding on switch 2 spanning tree is no longer blocking any ports so display STP let's look at brief as you can see bridge aggregation 1 is forwarding gigabit 101 is also forwarding display STP brief notice here bridge aggregation 1 is forwarding it's the root port because that's the port to use to get to the root bridge which in this case is switch 2 gigabit 101 is also forwarding which is the link to the PC so no ports are blocking in this topology at the moment because we bonded the two 10 gigabit links 27 and 28 into a single bridge aggregation now that we've configured our bridge aggregation we need to configure VLANs and allow those VLANs across the bridge aggregation in other words we need to set up the bridge aggregation as a trunk some other commands that are useful with regards to bridge aggregation is display link aggregation summary as you can see here bag 1 has been created in this case it was configured statically we didn't use LACP to set up the bridge aggregation you can see that two ports have been selected there are no unselected ports if you have unselected ports it means that there's a problem on those ports that you need to investigate let's type the command display link aggregation verbose and let's look at bridge aggregation 1 as you can see here both port 27 and 28 have been statically added to the link aggregation when we configure the full topology I'll show you how to set up link aggregation using LACP between the E series switches and the A series switches the choice is yours you can use LACP or you can use static bridge aggregation <laughs>